Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. In our previous lecture, we discussed about boundary layer and then the concepts about hydrodynamic theory and also we looked at how the flow separation happens because of the adverse pressure gradient. Right? Now, let us look at how lift is generated. Like, what is lift? We will define what is lift and drag right? of airfoil okay so now let us consider an airfoil which is a cross section of the wing as most of you are aware right so let's place this airfoil in the flow which means the airflow flow with the free stream velocity of v infinity which means the aerofoil is also moving at a velocity v infinity here right let us assume that this flow happens in a stream tube right okay so now let's say this stream tube as soon as it encounters this aerofoil right leading edge of this aerofoil we'll we'll talk about that what is leading edge let us say it encounters the aerofoil what happens is this stream, this parent stream tube will get splitted into two daughter stream tubes. So, there are many other explanations how the lift is generated. So, this is one that I believe is more, uh, more, more realistic. Right? So, let us say the initial cross section area of the stream tube be A and on the top surface let, let one be on the top, top of this aerofoil which is the top surface and let two be the portion of this aerofoil which is on the bottom side of this surface right so let us call it as yeah and then the corresponding area here is say a uh, you can say a1 and a2 right so here what happens is uh, since so the because of the presence of this body the flow gets splitted split across uh, splitted across this and then which results in a reduction in cross section area in the flow above and below the aerofoil right so again this flow happens again in the stream tubes we call them as daughter stream, uh, daughter stream tubes here so so a1 and a2 are less than area of the parent stream tube right since the area is reduced what happens is the flow tries to accelerate on the top and bottom surface here right that means you will have velocity v1 and v2 right and v1 and v2 are greater than v infinity can be is not it. So, which results in a drop in the pressure right according to Bernoulli's theorem right what happens is so let us say P 1 be the pressure at this point and P 2 be the pressure on the bottom side is of this aerofoil static pressure on the bottom side is uh, side of this aerofoil. So, P 1 and P 2 less than the pressure in the free stream velocity p infinity right okay static pressure in the free, free uh, yeah in the free stream now can we observe something here so there is a drop in pressure so there is an increase in velocity on either side of this aerofoil and at the same time there is a drop in pressure here right so when this drop in pressure if p1 and p2 are equal then there is no there is no pressure difference isn't it so which means there is no net force in this vertical plane if there is a difference in p1 and p2 say p1 is less than p2 which means there is a differential pressure in the vertical plane and there will be a force like the pressure because of uh, the static pressure on the bottom will try to push this aerofoil up right so equivalent to the area times of pressure static pressure acting there and the difference of this pressure will give you pressure times the area will give you the corresponding force right am i correct or not so that means 
when we have a pressure difference we can create a force called yeah a force a force here force due to aerodynamics am i correct now again this is from pressure contribution so we also witness that while discussing boundary layer theory uh, concepts uh, uh, initial concepts of this boundary layer theory so we talked about uh, viscous flows right so what is viscosity doing here it is trying to stop this body moving in this fluid am i correct or not which means it is trying to so if say when we when we represent v infinity in this direction which means the body is moving in the opposite direction right so the obstruction will be because of viscosity what will be the direction of obstructing force opposite to the motion right so due to viscosity let us say so let us say visco so viscosity is acting on the surface right so there is a force acting on the surface which is a yeah am i correct or not so there is a surface and there is a tangential force what we can expect is a shear stress acting in the tangential direction on the surface right that tau s rep be rep tau s represents this particular tangential stress called shear stress here right fine so when you have flow due to viscosity you have shear stress and when you have flow you have pressure distribution isn't it have pressure distribution here so this negative pressure is is nothing but drop in pressure compared to the static pressure surrounding static pressure right let us assume there is no energy addition in this particular flow right so we have uh, that our disk actuator disk attached to an aircraft near the fuselage right and let us assume the wings are far away from the influence of the free stream from this particular setup right the disc or the propeller propeller in the engine there right now this propeller is generating a thrust tree which is now fixed rigidly attached to the aircraft now the aircraft is being pulled by the with the same force right and wings are rigidly attached to this aircraft and wings also experience the same velocity forward velocity so in a fluid when there is forward velocity you have equal and opposite flow moving with equal and opposite velocity in the direction in the opposite direction of the velocity isn't it am i correct or not so that means so the wing which is not under the influence of this propeller ideally the pressure far ahead is static pressure which is atmospheric pressure so when it start moving that means the static pressure atmospheric pressure drops drops down and then your dynamic pressure increases to maintain the total pressure right constant so when this happens right uh, that means in that particular stream tube compared to the ambient conditions let us say if you consider an offset distance from that particular stream tube you have static pressure conditions am i correct or not so compared to that uh, ambient conditions the pressure inside that stream tube which is upstream is less am i correct or not and it is further less on the wings right so because the velocity is increasing here so the pressure ambient to this is static pressure but this pressure here the static pressure which is the atmospheric pressure there but the static pressure inside this particular stream tube is far lesser am i correct or not compared to static pressure and when compared uh, when we compare the pressure on the upper and bottom surface we have higher so this is for a typical airfoil right so we have higher pressure drop on the top and lower pressure drop on the bottom part right so we'll see why it is once we look at the nomenclature of this aerofoil and then we'll get back to that right why there is higher pressure drop on the top and 
lower pressure drop on the bottom. So there is pressure drop on either side, but there is a higher pressure drop on the top and low, lower pressure drop on the bottom face. So that's why these arrows represent that negative pressure, that pressure drop com uh, compared to the so ambient conditions, right? Pressure in the ambient conditions. Okay. So you have these two are happening together, right? Isn't it? So these two are happening together. When there is flow, there is viscosity, there is shear stress, and there is pressure, static pressure, right? And there is certain pressure distribution. So this talks about a typical pressure distribution. on airfoil right so figure b talks about shear stress distribution okay so combining them what we have is a resultant aerodynamic force isn't it so there so this object is moving in the fluid right this airfoil is moving in the fluid and it experiences pressure as well as shear stress distribution so and the result uh, as a result of this aerodynamic right aerodynamics we have a resultant aerodynamic force here okay let us say this is some reference line for the time being. So, and say this is moving in this V infinity. What do you mean by this V infinity? We are representing this entire flow field by means of this particular vector here, V infinity, which means the aerofoil is actually moving in this direction. Though it is oriented in a particular fashion, but still it is moving downward, right? Let us say if there is an arrow in this direction, that means the object is moving in this particular direction, right? Now, a component of this resultant aerodynamic force which is acting perpendicular to this V infinity, right? Say is called lift. Right? So we have a component from this resultant aerodynamic force which is acting perpendicular to V infinity. So V infinity and lift makes an angle 90 degrees here. Right? And a component of this resultant aerodynamic force acting parallel to V infinity or along V infinity is your drag, right? So now we have defined what is lift and drag. So lift is component of resultant aerodynamic force acting perpendicular to free stream. Okay, so and drag is a component of resultant aerodynamic force. which is acting in the direction of free stream. Which is direction of V infinity here, right? Isn't it? So we know now drag is in this negative direction of the motion, am I correct or not? So when we represent V infinity in this direction, which means the object is moving in this direction and we know drag is acting in the 
negative direction or along free v infinity which is the negative direction of motion so that means drag retards the motion of this object in the fluid here right so uh, let us now quickly look at what is the nomenclature of this uh, airfoil right and then the lift here lift here is defined as is represented by l and is defined as the dynamic pressure times half rho v square dynamic pressure times the reference area which in general is a wing planform area right times the non dimensional lift quotient called cl here right so where half rho v square is known as dynamic pressure as you are aware and is so q infinity it is represented by q infinity what you can say is so q infinity s times cl here right and the units of lift is newtons here right so so units are newtons or what kg meter per second square okay and then s is the plan reference area plan form reference area that is contributing towards lift here all right and then cl is a non dimensional lift coefficient we'll see what cl depends upon right as we progress we'll talk about that similarly drag is defined as half rho v square dynamic pressure times reference area times cd cd is a non dimensional drag coefficient right so you have s and this which is q infinity times s cd where cd is equals to cd cd is the non dimensional drag coefficient okay thank you